Welcome back Edgeteers. Today we're going to have a look at Fedora 28 Beta. We're going to try to do a fairly in-depth look. We're going to look at some of the features that are available, how to download it, the installation process. We're going to go through all of that. So I'm pretty excited about Fedora 28. Now usually there's quite a few different features that are added and in this case there are several and I've highlighted just a few but we're gonna take a look at all of them at least in brief and then I'm gonna stop off and talk about a few of them in more detail so for beginners um, if you're interested in downloading Fedora 28 um, and this always annoys me you know it, it really is something that I would prefer that Fedora would just make available right from the front page but they don't they say that if you would like to get this to download it from the download section now I'm not a hundred percent sure what they're saying so what I usually do is cruise down to the bottom here where they do have a download section and you can try Fedora Workstation they have here Fedora 27 they do have the Fedora 28 pre-release, which you can grab right here. And you can go see which Fedora 28 images there are. They give you some recommendations on running the pre-release version. And of course here they have the Mac OS uh, mini installer, which is actually really nice. It'll help you make a uh, bootable USB key to be able to boot into same for Windows Linux is a little bit different one thing you can do is upgrade your Fedora installation using DNF I of course do not recommend doing this if you're looking to uh, put this on a production system don't do it I would definitely wait a while you, you definitely don't want to install this particular version here until you're ready uh, you can get the 64-bit uh, 1.8 gigabyte ISO and there's actually several more additions if you go to alternative downloads and go to Fedora 28 beta release click it now there's many 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 options so if you're interested in PowerPC architecture um, they've added the S390X architecture as well. There's some cloud installations uh, if you're interested in trying those. I don't have an AWS account. I'm thinking of signing up for one just, just to try it out. Uh, let's see. Now this one, keep in mind if you're looking here at alternatives, they do have a net install. I typically don't use the net install. I'd like to have the entire offline version. They've got some other cloud-based Im images here. They've got Fedora everything. And what I actually ended up doing, and I've lost the link I actually used, it wasn't here. I did download using BitTorrent the uh, Fedora DVD, as it were, the, the 1.8 gigabyte edition. I like to like I say I like to have the media that can give me everything on it and I am letting it seed so it doesn't look like it's getting used all that much but this is why I really think that blocking BitTorrent is not such a good idea I know I talk about this every time I do a Fedora test installation but I love using BitTorrent. I literally got this torrent in about 20 seconds and it's 1.8 gigabytes. It was really, really, really fast. I've got 158 megabit download stream. Um, at least I perceived it as being about 20 seconds. Might have been a little bit fast, a little bit slower, but I was really happy with the speed. So if you ever hear anybody say, yeah, we should just block BitTorrent, say, you know, there are legal uses for BitTorrent, just so you know. And they're very legitimate, and I find them very useful. All right, let's get back to it. So I've already downloaded this. Um, let's see if we can find out where it is. Should be in my downloads folder. And there it is. Beta 1.3, 1 1.8 gigabytes. 
and of course the checksum file if you want you can run the checksum and ensure that the checksum is the same exact that you get from the download at the Fedora site I will admit I'm a little lazy and I don't do it for my own personal use but if you are doing this for a business um, or for a highly secure use of Fedora you owe it to yourself to always verify the checksum I mean simply put you want to make sure there's no middleman and the file you received is the correct file alright so there's just a ton of download options and you really have a whole variety of things that you can do uh, architectures you can download and note too they're still supporting 32-bit here on Fedora workstation which is a good thing I'm not so sure about uh, server I haven't looked into that they probably are but I'm glad to see that we still have 32-bit support probably gonna be phased out pretty soon um, just to let you know I just have a feeling 32 bits gonna go away it's going away with other distributions already so most likely will not be around very long alright uh, yeah here is the link I actually got it from torrent.fedoraproject.org and you can see all the different beta releases they have and I came down here and grabbed the x86-64 beta torrent here with a time date release of 4-2 so two days old typically with Fedora you'll see a tremendous amount of updates and that definitely is the case here let's see we've got 29 mainline changes here and down here we have what they call the self-contained changes proposals and that's 20 more now on this particular list for some reason they didn't list 3.28 of gnome desktop interface I know many of you think that it's pronounced gnome but it's actually not it's gnome as in GNU so if you called it gnome to me I might correct you but I probably wouldn't because I really don't care what you call it if you like it that's all that matters to me anyway uh, so there were quite a few changes here the gnome 3.28 chongqing I believe is how you pronounce the cha the uh, version 3.28 uh, according to gnome it's been six months of hard work they have 25,832 changes that have been made by 838 contributors so if there's any concern about gnome disappearing um, I think you can safely say that's not gonna happen now there's a couple of things they've changed this is basically the um, read me on the changes one is you can now choose your favorites I don't know how useful that will be for me but for some of you it may become something that you will find useful so basically what they're saying is once you star the files and folders you basically can go look in they say a special location hopefully they've got a list here let's see home documents no not really oh yeah up here boy am I blind or what starred right there uh, right at the top which I think is cool I know I talk about this a lot I love having the home directory so you can just click on it and get a list of all that that's already been in GNOME it's not a new feature but unfortunately you do have to add that on Mac and that's really annoying and that's just one of the really strong walled garden concepts they have with Mac OS that I don't quite agree with anyway I always add my own home directory if you will uh, let's see what else uh, personal organization improvements applications that help with personal organization have been improved you can add UTC time zones to your world times the contacts application will allow sorting by either surname or first name that's a nice feature I, I like that I like to you know when you have a feature that allow you to do something um, but not take away the original feature like it does with say Facebook for example 
not that many of us use Facebook, but if you do, it's a surname search, excuse me, a first name search, not the last name. Month view and calendar has been improved. Weather information has been added to the calendar app. To do has been updated. I'd like to have a look at that. I need a good to do app. The only thing is I don't use GNOME as my primary desktop interface as you can see right now. The Cantrell font has been updated. It's supposed to be prettier and easier to read. I'm all for easier to read. One of the concepts that are used now, the artistic concept, is to use a non-black colored font, so that's an image, uh, but a font that isn't black like this or like this one and then make it smaller and most people over 40 begin to have a difficult time re uh, reading fonts that are not black uh, and at least slightly larger and thicker so I don't know uh, we'll see how it goes but when I look at it, it it looks decent in the images although you can see here how small these fonts are I usually go ahead and make them larger I download the Tweak UI uh, GNOME tool and go ahead and make my tweaks to GNOME. See, even I do it sometimes. GNOME, GNOME. I don't think anybody's feelings will be hurt if you call it GNOME. This is something I'm interested in. One thing I didn't like about boxes was um, it's a pain in the butt to find out where the boxes are and they're not overly portable so this front end um, you know, in, in terms of virtual box, it's just so much easier to move your virtual machine from one system to another, from one architecture to another. So one of the things I commonly do is I will go ahead and move my system, my virtual machines from Linux to Windows to Mac OS, and I can just run it. It's all contained in one folder, and I can quickly run it. Uh, my experience with boxes has been, and, and some of you out there may um, have a better, simpler solution. I have found where the boxes are stored, and this was several years ago, so I bet things are better now. So I'm going to look into it again. But my experience has been, um, you know, you can find where it's stored, but when you try to import it into another system, it doesn't seem to work. I've, I've had issues with that, and I'm hoping it's better. Uh, several of my users have mentioned that Boxes is based on Chemu, Q-E-M-U, and the um, hardware virtualization layer is supposed to be way, way, way better, at least in terms of speed, and I would like to put that to the test as well. So in the future, maybe we'll do a Boxes versus uh, virtual box speed test and see what we come up with. Now, the one thing, as far as I know, again, this may be wrong, but um, Chemu doesn't have really good support for Windows. Um, so that's been my experience in the past. And again, things have may, cha may have changed quite a bit. So take it for what it's worth. I, I haven't done it in a while, use boxes or any Chemu-based um, hardware virtualization. So it may be way better than it used to be just so you know okay we'll check it out in the future though media and entertainment features what do we got well media handling and entertainment has gotten better in GNOME 3.28 uh, they have a new app called photos which is supposedly it's got new import uh, features that make it easier to use I hope it's not too easy if you know what I mean so easy it's like photos and Mac OS um, I find Photos and Mac OS horribly klutzy and difficult to use um, and, you know, to copy from your phone to Photos to a directory to use for something else. I think the app is really klutzy. I'm old fashioned, you know, I just need to get the stuff off the phone and throw it in a directory. I know where my directories are. I understand directory management. I don't need my hand held and if that's what this becomes I'll be disappointed but we'll find out. Uh, an all new on-screen keyboard so uh, probably not this video but we're gonna do a hardware test direct because we want to find out how good this is using GNOME 
and whether or not um, folding my Yoga 920 into tablet mode, if it works really well. I had a hard time getting the keyboard to come up whenever I would tap an area where I was going to enter text. I would say about, you know, in previous versions of Fedora, about 80% of the time it would, but there was those times where it would not come up. Looks like we have a new performance monitor tool, maybe better than the old Perfmon. Um, what does it say? Usage is a new GNOME application that is being introduced in 3.28 as a technology preview. The new app is designed to make it easy to diagnose and resolve performance and capacity issues. Okay. Looks a lot like Perfmon. It looks more basic. What do you think? Um, what do we got? One, two, three, four threads here. All the same color. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that. We'll check it out. Uh, extended device support and that's not all there are so many different things that they've done and if you want to find this uh, I just went to uh, gnome.org and checked out the release notes it was very straightforward wasn't too difficult to find at all this was kind of an irritant for me how many times do you have to choose US keyboard and US language or whatever your keyboard and language is um, once should be it, right? You're doing the install. I should only have to choose it once as an example. So they're basically saying there was too much redundancy between the Anaconda installer and GNOME's initial setup after reboot. So they're saying they're going to try to eliminate some of those and we're going to do the install and find out just how well it goes. Now Many of you may not know about VAAPI. I have nicknamed it VAPI. Um, I can't tell you if that's its official acronym name or not, but it's just easier to say, so I just call it VAPI. I've been doing a lot of research on VAPI, and basically what it purports to do is um, making some of the multimedia players play better. And they do this by using this API to integrate with your hardware. So, and there could be other uses more than just multimedia players. Um, this is version one, which is pretty major. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm hoping it doesn't introduce any complications or problems with tools like Caden Live. I, I think we'll find out pretty quick, but I was also hoping that this uh, VAPI or VAAPI would really work well with uh, smaller computers like my Raspberry Pi. Right now VLC doesn't work very good on the Raspberry Pi so I use the built-in command line video player which actually works just fine so even if I couldn't get to the point where I was using uh, VLC on the Raspberry Pi that would be okay if you're curious about this particular tool um, there's a pretty good wiki about it and you might want to check it out and see how it might help you out depending on which video card type you have. So here's one. I think this might be a little controversial. Improved laptop battery life. So I actually started reading through the detailed description of what they're doing and they change some uh, hardware and power saving features in the policy and I don't know what policy specific uh, I'd have to get into the real nitty-gritty of the details the thing I don't like about it is for one I don't know what policy and I'm not sure where to find it and what the updates are and if needed how to undo it if I just want full power mode um, some of my users have discussed using power top I use TLP and what I really like about TLP and I'm sure PowerTop does the same thing uh, with TLP of course it has different modes so it has powered mode where I get uh, full processing power and then it has battery mode which you know tries to save power kind of do a like the Windows balanced mode and that's what they're talking about here they're basically trying to mirror the Windows default 
um, which is medium power, so to speak, you know, the balanced mode. As long as it doesn't cost any performance hits, shouldn't be an issue. Now, I'm, of course, on a desktop on this particular system, and we're going to run it in a virtual machine. I'm really hoping that we don't see a major hit, uh, is, well, any hit, really, with performance. I doubt we will, really, on the desktop, but I'll be very curious about what happens with laptops. Now that, of course, will be a, a much more in-depth test, so I would have to get a version of Fedora 28 working on my Yoga 920, and I need to do a Fedora 27 test with TLP and then do a Fedora 28 test and see how long the battery runs. It's funny, you know, it used to be really easy to do these battery tests. You could do a battery test in two or three hours. Now it takes somewhere between seven and ten hours to do a battery test on my newer systems so it takes quite a long time it's you you have to you know invest an entire day and you have to make sure you have the time because i try not to close the lid or anything have the screen go dark you know and i have a variety of different use use cases that i do while i'm on the system browsing the internet um watching some videos doing productivity work and so on and so forth so i try to do the exact same thing and I also do a full-on charge between tests because I want to make sure I don't just top it off to 100% and then go right to work I actually let it stay charged for 24 hours before I cycle back and start testing again just to make sure there's no possibility that the battery is a little bit lower so between Windows and Fedora I do that quite frequently and I will be doing that again, so watch for that video in the future. Okay, VirtualBox guest integration. This is, uh, I'm, I'm excited for this, although it probably doesn't make a really big difference. Um, the purpose of this particular change, according to the text here, is to ship the VirtualBox guest drivers and tools by default in the Fedora Workstation products. So if they're going to do that, it sounds like it'll be in regular Fedora updates repository. So those will be updated frequently. It will save you, you know, 30 seconds to not have to download the tools and theoretically also they should be installed automatically if VirtualBox does know the version of the OS that you are installing theoretically so good to see will it improve performance I just don't think so no I think this is about like they say here user experience uh, better integration but nowhere do they say it's gonna have anything to do with performance so we still have to te test boxes because boxes may work better. This is one of the ones that I guarantee 99.9% .9 of you will say, so what? Well, the thing is, I really like the TCP wrappers tool. I thought it was really cool. Um, they're getting rid of it. And TCP wrappers was a way to create a blacklist or whitelist of IPs and ports. And it really was very useful. Now they're saying the reason we don't need it anymore, and we haven't actually needed it, quote unquote, for a long time, ever since IT, IP tables came about. Um, and even before that, technically speaking, but their whole logic is, we should just get rid of this because you know there are firewalls in linux um what else are they saying and direct application based connection filtering so you shouldn't need tcp wrappers anymore i know but it's just so easy to implement you know i i really like it <laughs> uh, have i used it in the last five years no i haven't okay i admit it um I'm asking for a feature, but I've got this philosophy. Um, if you're running a server and say you have to edit a configuration file, I will save five copies, six copies of my previous edits of the configs. And 
somebody always at some point goes in and deletes a bunch of stuff. Well, I deleted that old module or I deleted that old driver. And now nothing works or whatever. I, I upgraded to the new one and I deleted the old one and now nothing works. And they did a manual install or whatever or compiled some code or whatever they did and didn't save the old binary. They just overwrote it. We have so much storage on our servers now. You get a basic server shipped with, you know, eight cores, two processors minimum, and you're going to get a drive with tons of storage. You're probably going to have a RAID, honestly. And why are you deleting anything? That is my thoughts. I always, you know, usually I'll create a folder called old or whatever in that particular application or whatever um, service I'm using or whatever, and I'll dump stuff in there for a while, a long while. And, you know, if you're worried about security, you can change it, but, you know, you can make it root only or whatever. Usually it is anyway, if you're dealing with servers. But I'm kind of the same way on workstations. Unless I'm really tight for room, I don't usually delete things. I usually keep them around just in case. You never know. I'm sorry. You, you never know. Don't delete everything immediately. I have saved my bacon so many times when I've made a change to a server and sometimes a workstation, but mostly servers, and all of a sudden the phone lights up and there's a hundred calls coming in and I go, oh shoot, I made a mistake. No problem. I just take the new comp file, the configuration file, and save it as new what did I do, you know, something like that, and I take the old backup I have that I just saved as a backup and I put it in place of the new one and I'm back in business just like that so anyway configuration files they don't take any storage think about it all right uh, so that's that's the thing I like TCP wrappers but try not to laugh at me they say here hey it was released 20 years ago you know IPv6 support was added later at the time, it was a powerful tool to block all traffic, but these days we can do the same thing using firewalls. This is like the system D effect right here, I'm telling you. Um, you don't need that simple tool anymore. We have better, very complex, more difficult to use tools like the firewall. Well, you have to put in a rule and you have this long command or you have to go edit your firewall configuration and you have to re-up the firewall not that that should be a problem whatsoever um, the way system D and firewall D um, re-up is elegant so you shouldn't ever see a problem same with IP tables you should be able to re-up IP tables restart it without any trouble so but it is more complicated not orders of magnitude more complicated but you know uh, yeah it is more complicated Think of the 1970s car versus today's car. You're not just going to walk out there with a set of wrenches and fix a modern car. That's all there is to it. Okay, enough babbling. Uh, so those were the, the things that I wanted to cover. And since we've got it downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and launch VirtualBox. And we'll go ahead and get started right from the get-go. Did I actually put a virtual box up here? No, I didn't. Did I put it in my favorites? Yes, I did. And we'll create a new one. We're going to call it Fedora 28 Beta. And we'll go next. Uh, this particular system has plenty of RAM, so I'm going to give it 4 gigs. And I've got eight actual cores, 16 threads. We'll get into that in a minute. And I'll create a new disk. And just in case I'm going to be playing with it for a while, this is overkill. I'm, I'm never going to get anywhere near that, but just in case. Okay, so I'm going to cruise into settings. Oh, we have a runtime error, huh? Oh, no problem. I moved my Win 10. No worries. Okay, my Windows 10 got up to 60 gigabytes, and we're on a 256 gigabyte SSD, so I actually moved it to the 
Windows 10 exclusive SSD that I have and I, I just need to update that. Let's go into system and have a look at these settings. So we've got four gig, uh, we'll go to processor and I think I'll give it four, see if we can um, speed up installation. I will enable PAE, acceleration, yes. Let's cruise over to display. Now usually you can do 3D acceleration, but I've gotten some odd side effects. So for right this minute, I'm gonna leave it off, but I am gonna bounce video memory up to as much as it can go. Uh, I don't think we'll need to scale. We're at 1080p monitor count. I do have two, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'll click OK. Now, when I started, it should ask me for a disk, and it does. So I'll grab this directory right here and plop it in here, and there is our ISO, just want to make sure the name's correct. Yes. Make sure I didn't get the wrong download. That never happens, right? And we'll do start. I have a feeling for the most part the install is going to be about the same. Now, I usually skip testing media. I do not skip testing media when I'm dealing with a server or a workstation somebody else is going to use. Never had a problem except in the bad old days of floppies oh by the way testing media in floppies was it was terrible um, I always thought you know how long could this possibly take well it could take a while I used to do the net installs a lot back then but they weren't net installs they were more like an FTP installer um, so you had just basically a kernel and you know some basic tools and then you could install using FTP uh, well, we could try it, but I want to go right for the gusto. There we go. Make sure I'm not in the way. I'll make it a little smaller. So I'm going to tell it install the hard drive. I do like the wallpaper. I think it's really cool looking. And we'll see just how long it'll take here. So here we use our language and keyboard. I accept my fate. This is unstable pre-release software. What's the worst that could happen? So <clears throat> we have to tell it what to do. It does have the disk selected. So if you click it once, it unselects it. Twice, selects it and I'm gonna let it do its thing so I'll click done sometimes you have to be a little patient at that step it can take a little while now the last time we did this uh, I was doing an install using my laptop and I love being here with my desktop computer it's so much faster so I'm gonna begin the installation I notice it's not asking me about users or anything like that. Maybe it will after it starts the install in earnest. All right, well, the configuration and installation is actually complete. It only took about five minutes to do the install. However, and I'm afraid this is what Fedora is thinking is redundancy, but it didn't give me the option to set the root password or to create a new user, set their password, and also make the user a administrator, also known as sudo. So we're going to quit and reboot and see if it comes up later, which at least normally it doesn't. All right, we'll do a power off. <clears throat> and we'll restart and while it's doing that let's see if I'm fast enough remove the disk from the virtual drive force on mount yes we did it okay kernel 4.16 cool newer kernel 
course, 4.16 just came out. And there are quite a few updates in the kernel itself. I wanted to mention also, I went through just a few of the updates, but um, there's probably thousands of updates in each of the update categories that we looked at and there's updates in the kernel there's just tons and tons of updates and many of those updates are security updates just so you know okay so here we are with the welcome screen in gnome we'll click next and location services we'll turn that off we'll leave problem reporting on see if it can be helpful I will skip adding accounts okay here we go so <clears throat> now it wants to know some information and we're gonna create a username so this is something that's built into gnome that normally we wouldn't have seen before so I'll just put mark I usually stick with username mark we'll click next set a password any basic password will do for now and then next hmm let's start using Fedora aha so I wonder if it's gonna do a complete reboot no it logged off as root and logged back on as the new user mark Okay, we'll put in Mark's password. <clears throat> and the usual getting started. Now, I think what I'm going to do, and I apologize, but I want to shut it down again. We can see it's working. Everything looks correct. Whoops. Just brought up the calendar uh, and I'm gonna power off and once it gets shut down I'm gonna go back into the settings <clears throat> and we are gonna turn on 3d acceleration and when I come back up I'm gonna see if I need to install the well, I shouldn't have to. We'll find out. I want to know if I've got to install the uh, VirtualBox tools and drivers inside Fedora 28. See, on the one hand, you're a server running on Fedora 28 and you're running VirtualBoxes. On the other hand, you're a VirtualBox of Fedora 28. So do I need to install the drivers in that case? Well, we'll find out. <clears throat> Usually, it will tell you. So we're going to insert the... Okay, so I don't have the guest editions file on my Fedora 27, or it wants to get the latest ones. I think it wants to get the latest ones, because I'm pretty sure I had a version previous. All right, so we'll go ahead and download that. And you can see how fast it is. It's usually quite, quite fast. Keeping in mind that this, this download of the tools is on my Fedora 27 VirtualBox server, not a VirtualBox system. All right, I'm going to insert it. Usually it doesn't work. <laughs> Bet you 10 bucks it doesn't work. I've always had to go in and use the command line. We're going to try it anyway. I'm hoping it does. We don't even know if this user, Mark in Fedora 28, uh, is sudo, is a sudoer yet. Okay, so the system appears to have a version of VirtualBox guest editions already installed. I don't want to do an install again if I don't have to so I'm gonna say no 
and it's going to close this window. Now, what I've noticed since we've enabled 3D on it, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but the mouse was kind of doing this slow thing, and now it's it's tracking much, much better. So it's definitely made a difference. <clears throat> um, let's go to activities. Yeah, I see a much more fluid look here. So let's launch a browser. Make sure we're connected to the internet. I'm sure we are, but. Anybody ever go to CNET News anymore? Okay, I'm not going to make any comments on this because I'm afraid if I do, um, this video will automatically <laughs> uh, be demonetized. You know, that evil, evil thing. <clears throat> I'm afraid that if, if even that much showed up, it might get demonetized and I'm going to end up having to do it at it. So there's software updates available. I wonder, can I get it here with the software tool? Let's go shopping. Now this is interesting. I don't remember this. Enable third-party software repositories. Access additional software from selected third-party repositories, which are probably the ones I'm, I use normally. <clears throat> well, let's click Find Out More. Non-free software redirects here to Wikipedia. And eh, not that useful. I think we all know what non-free software means. And it's in quotations, so it's it's free, as in you can download it and install it, but the license is not a GPL-style license or a FOSS-style license. I'm going to say enable. I'm not sure which repositories I just enabled, but... Now, we do have 16 updates. You know me. Normally, I don't do updates via the GUI. But I think now's a good time to test it out and see how things go. So these multimedia codecs here definitely I don't think would have been added. Well, it's calling them updates, not new installations. So I guess it would. Let's grab restart and install. What do you think of that? So is it saying it already had downloaded them? That's different. <clears throat> okay, so... Were those 16 updates? No, okay, now it's doing... Oh no, Fedora, please don't do this. <laughs> I definitely do not... I don't know if this is just GUI functionality we're talking about here, but... Um, are we, why do we try to be like Microsoft? Why do I want to be held hostage by updates? No, I don't. I want to run the updates in the background while I'm working and reboot when I darn well feel like it. I don't like this style of update. Now, to be fair, I haven't done it in GNOME 3.x at all, really. Well, I did maybe one time, but I have never seen an update style like this. So I'm thinking this is new, and I'm cringing. Can you see me cringe? I am cringing. Was this brought to you by maybe some Microsoft engineers who are trying to slow down Linux in general and GNU and make it more ponderous, kind of like... Uh, Windows 10? Ugh. Okay, so what time is it? 6.29. I'm not going to make you sit here while the updates go through. I'm going to pause and hope this will get over fairly soon. It's going a little faster, but so disappointed. Shades of Windows 10. All right, well, it finished the updates. Now it's saying it's rebooting after doing the updates. It's 6.32, so it took 
roughly three minutes. <clears throat> Looks like we got a new kernel in the process. I am really disappointed. I mean, if I was trying to do something important with my system, I mean, I did have the option to do the update. I was just under the impression that the install would have been much faster. That's kind of a bummer. Well, let's log back in. And we'll go ahead and try to become root. Or I should say, uh, do a sudo operation. So I've got the latest updates. And I'm going to add terminal to the favorites. And we'll just go ahead and launch it. And we'll do sudo bash and see if we can. We can. Okay, so, I mean, user-wise, that's immediate. So there was a little redundancy they were able to remove. And that is decent. Now, I did want to have a look at files. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and remove the... Oh, I can't actually... Whatever. It did it anyway, even though it said it couldn't. Um, I just ejected, if you will, the uh, VirtualBox tools. We can cruise over to Devices in VirtualBox. And it's claiming they're removed because we cannot remove it. Okay. I personally, I like the list view. like this but uh, usually I go with a little bit smaller gaps here but I'm not gonna worry about all that stuff right now um, let's go to nothing in pictures well let's make some pictures we're gonna try print screen Okay, it looks like it did it in the VM, and it plopped it in there, and we'll do another one. <clears throat> and I'm going to star this one, go to home, anything in templates, no. Can we star a folder? No, we can't. So it's, we can only put a star on actual files, which I suppose is fair enough. Um, one thing I did notice, I didn't mention this, but I did have a note to keep an eye out for it. Um, and that is LibreOffice 6.0 is installed. They don't mention it as an update, and I think it's fairly important. Uh, let's see. test file and I'm just gonna save this test file and we're gonna save it close it and we'll add this file we're gonna try anyway I find that odd So I'll go back to pictures. I've got one added. Go back to starred. Now it's added. So it just didn't update. Let's unstar it. OK. Starred files will appear here. All right. So we'll go ahead and star it. And it doesn't show that it's starred. But if I go here, no starred files are appearing. That's odd. Okay, that one is starred. I'm going to cruise to documents. But that one will not star, so let's go to starred. Only my screenshot. For some reason, this one won't, won't allow me to select star. Well, it is a beta, so it's not the end of the world necessarily. 
and let's bring up some of the other updates. Let's just have a quick look here. What else was in GNOME worth mention? The usage. So let's go to activities and we'll type in usage. <clears throat> hmm. Is it not installed by default? Quite possibly, since we're talking about Fedora 28 differences versus uh, GNOME. So this might be a new feature in GNOME, but Fedora 28, the, the developers of Fedora didn't decide to include it. So let's launch it and see if it's, it's working. Yes, it is. And therein is the problem. It's not that big of a deal, really, but if we instead go into activities and do perf uh, system monitor resources, we have discrete colors for each of the threads, but we're not going to run two of these. Well, we'll just leave that on for right now. So it shows us interestingly enough any processes that pop up memory 41 percent ram used i'm actually a little surprised there seems like an awful lot just to run a gui and we don't have anything else running right now hmm gnome shell itself taking up quite a bit so is that it? Uh, this I kind of like. So I'm assuming it's trying right now. Or is that the operating system? What if I go to home? Mozilla local cache. And then it gives me folders and how much. That's going to be helpful. That right there I do like a lot. Because I always want to know in my particular home directory what the heck is taking up all the room, you know, and then I can go look. Um, so that's actually a neat feature. But these other two just seem really basic to me. Can I single them out? Oops. No, I don't actually want to. I clicked on GNOME Shell. I don't want to force quit anything. Hmm. I mean, why would clicking on it? Well, whatever. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of nice. But here in Resource Monitor, you know, we've essentially got the same thing. But what we don't have, like we do here, is this really cool storage tool. I like it. I really think they should have just merged these two and, and moved storage as a tab over here. I, this is the, the problem I have with open source. It's not a big problem, but... Um, it's almost like you know when you don't have this unity of development goals so you have all these different groups saying hey let's make this cool tool wow look what we made this um, you know in my opinion is essentially useless um, memory quaint but no better or worse than what we have right here we really don't need more than what we're seeing here but then you go to the storage and it's actually really cool and quite usable I wonder what storage 2 is no content here okay just available Hmm. Oh, it must be different file systems. I'm just not sure what this one is. So that 128 gigabyte looks like it was divided up. Which makes sense because home's usually on a different file system altogether than 
the operating system. Can we go into the operating system? Not really. Pictures. Okay. <clears throat> nothing in music and of course nothing in video yet uh, I don't know what to think about that tool um, we won't be able to really test out the keyboard until we go to hardware so no more shot well by default now we have photos let's see if it's installed by default yes it is so if I click on a photo brings it up what features do I have I can star it I can add it to favorites remove it from favorites edit it crop colors enhance filters decent um, share I haven't logged into any of my accounts but I imagine they would show up here if I decided to do sharing with more in-depth menu we can export it which probably means change the file format No, not really. Where would we be exporting it to? Export. Okay. So where exactly did it export to? Oh, let's see. Pictures. What am I doing? I'm on the wrong computer. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's go into files and then we'll go into pictures I was wondering like wow did you see all those pictures I have all of a sudden yeah okay so that's kind of nice I suppose you could choose it only had folders specifically it didn't you know like I, I imagine you could put in a full path like if I had a USB drive plugged in or whatever so Pictures is decent and it hasn't disrupted my folder structure um, so it's not really disabling any of the features that I'm normally used to and I could still install Shotwell if I wanted that better. Might need that in KDE. I mean photos will work but my experience has been it doesn't scale very well on 4K which is a bit of a problem. Now, this one here, I usually add it to favorites like that. All right, well, I'm going to close the command line. And I was looking back on the list here with GNOME and the new boxes feature. There's some interesting features they were talking about in here. If I go ahead and go to activities and boxes came up, I'm just so used to typing in the title and then clicking the individual app I don't know why I do that but I'm gonna click boxes apparently when you select a operating system to install it'll actually go and get the media for you so you can do an OS download and they've got all kinds of stuff here so it's actually very impressive I did not know you could do that so that's boxes in Fedora 28. Let's go ahead and launch boxes here. And we're going to figure out. I may have uh, the similar version here. I'm going to do new. No, it definitely is different. So you can enter a URL, I'll hit cancel. Uh, so the current boxes I have there is, is definitely different. Look at all these different versions that it has available that you can download. NetBSD, FreeDOS even, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Debian, Jesse, Alt Linux. And of course you can you can select any one that you've downloaded just like you normally can I wonder what the difference between legacy and standard of freedos is if any of you guys know let me know 
Um, so it just goes ahead and downloads the media and does the installation. That's actually a very cool feature. I'm impressed. Um, I want to see how much my resources are being used. Well, a little bit. Looks like maybe 30 to 40 percent of the processor, but it's only downloading media, of course. All right, let's jump around, see if there's anything we missed. The new Cantorell font. I don't usually use the calendar very much. I think if I were to use GNOME more as my virtual desktop and tie it in with um, the calendar that I have with Google, I probably would use it a lot more, but I just, I really haven't used it that much. And I'm not really fond of the uh, productivity apps like Calendar in KDE. Now, this one would scale just fine on my 1080p, so I could use the GNOME Calendar app while in KDE. And we played around with choosing your favorites. Uh, we saw that that initial setup redundancy had been eliminated, so that was decent. I only had to choose keyboard once, uh, choose my language once, and create a logon one time, and it worked great. Have not had a chance really to do any testing with this. This is going to be more in depth. Um, and to some extent, it's going to be a back end thing. You won't really notice it um, unless you were having a problem with your system you know playing videos on this system my Ryzen 1700 of course I don't have any problem um, my Yoga 910 uh, no it really wasn't a problem um, the one system that was a problem now that I think about it was my older Phenom 2 X6 1055T so I at some point I'm gonna install something on that and now that I'm thinking about it I may just drag that sucker over here next week and do the Fedora 28 beta on it and see how it does with hardware and we'll have a little bit of fun doing that but anyway let's continue of course we can't test battery in a virtual machine that'll take hardware the VirtualBox drivers do seem to be installed, which I really like. I didn't have to download them. Well, let me rephrase that. They were already installed and VirtualBox knew it. And it told me it could go ahead and download them and install them again. I let it download, but I chose not to install. I enabled 3D and it actually worked really well. All right, let's let boxes create a virtual machine memory 64 megabytes I love it uh, how about 640 how about one let me think no that would actually be a lot <laughs> now that I think about it you know 640k was the minimum for uh, DOS back in the bad old days so I'm just gonna leave this as it is and do we have a next option? What do we do? Create virtualization extensions are unavailable on your system because we are in a virtualized machine. So I'm guessing this won't work. Uh, I'm going to go with deny for right this moment. Okay, install the hard disk. Let's just see if it'll actually install. English. Continue with the installation. Partition drive C. Let's use FAT32. Create DOS, create primary. Oops, sorry, number one. This reminds me so much of installing DOS. I love the nostalgia. This is awesome. Okay, we will escape. Looks exactly like DOS F disk. Um, I think I do need to do a number two. The only startable partition is drive one and it's already set to active. Okay. Um, so I should be able to do escape. 
escape to exit F disk and yes to reboot. Is it going to reboot or does it just shut it off by default? Well, it looks like it's coming back up, I think. I notice my mouse disappears now when I go hover over. You see that? I don't know what that's about. There we go. We're back. Let's see if we can start it up. Booting from disk. Kind of looks frozen. Can I do control alt delete? I'm afraid to do control alt delete. Um, let's do control alt to get my mouse back and send control alt delete. Uh, something didn't quite work right, but what do you expect for trying to create a virtual machine in a virtual machine? Uh, it could be because it's a beta or because I'm inside of a virtual machine, but I'm, I'm excited about the boxes updates. I'm definitely going to look into that more in depth and see if I can learn how to transfer a boxes virtual machine from one computer to another. That will really, really help me out. Oh, let's see. Anything else we need to go over? Any new apps or anything we need to look at? I'm really glad to see version 6.0 of LibreOffice here. And it looks like we've got all the basics here as usual. And we now have usage installed. I always like to look in Sundry and see what else is there. Nothing much. Problem reporting. Uh, utilities any updates in the disk usage utility which is kind of nice and let's check the home folder <clears throat> I like this tool as well it gives you an idea so here I've got a cache for example here I've got downloads 438 megabytes I I think this is a pretty cool tool as well you don't really need that usage tool with all of these elements we have here. This has been around for a while. Although it seems like it's easier to me to go into storage in the usage tool. Um, let's go back into activities and utilities again. These are all the usual tools that are in there. By the way, I used Document Viewer to work on my taxes the other day. I was able to print out uh, versions of my PDFs for my taxes, and everything worked really well. I tried to use the LibreOffice tool, and it looked like it had redacted the text about, I don't know, maybe 30% of it, of the PDF. But when I printed it out with Document Viewer, it was perfectly fine. So these are all the usual stuff that you get. Anything change in settings? Not really. I mean, this is basically about the same. Power, what's different here? Automatic suspend is on, blank screen after five minutes. Um, Outputs, nightlight feature, which I usually don't use. The only thing I'm using it on is my iPhone, and I've turned down the color so it's not really super red. Natural scrolling off de by default. Hoo ya! I don't like natural scrolling. I don't know about you. Uh, I find it really annoying. <laughs> so it doesn't do me any favors. What else are we missing? Anything else? Has Rhythmbox by default. I really like Rhythmbox. Some of you may disagree, but uh, I've found Rhythmbox to actually be my favorite music player. And what version? Probably the latest of Firefox because I did do updates. Let's see. help about Firefox 59.01 yep um, 
what would happen if I went ahead and did tried to do an update? sudo dnf update. Strange. Uh, we are on the internet, right? Yeah. Kind of looks like it's trying to work this time. I was curious too to see which repos we enabled when we did the non free. Nothing to do. Okay, everything's fine now. And it looks like it's only doing test updates and updates. So I don't know if that feature is quite fully enabled yet. Um, I know there's a way to list repositories. repo list yeah it doesn't look like it added much if I'm understanding this correctly Fedora updates and updates testing is what it looks like is installed I'll do one more check oops not BI There's repo info. I guess I should do sudo DNF repo info. Fedora updates we have. And we're on mirrors. All right, so Fedora updates. Fedora updates testing. So I don't think those other non-free repositories were added, like RPM Fusion and stuff like that. And I'm not going to mess with it right now because um, it looks like the normal Fedora repo as well. It makes sense to me that the beta isn't going to be pulling from mainstream RPM Fusion um, repositories just yet. That does make sense. All right. Well, I think I'm going to cut it here because this thing is going to be about an hour and a half when it's all said and done. Uh, I hope you found this useful. I want to do more exploring of Fedora 28. I think what's coming up next is a proper hardware test. Uh, I'd love to put it on my Yoga 920 and just do a comparison. Now, I normally don't use GNOME, so uh, I'm probably going to run it as a live image. I'm not going to actually do an installation because uh, I don't want to change my laptop over to a beta because I still do a lot of work in Fedora on it. So I don't think that'd be a very good idea. But this is definitely a very stable beta image to me. Now, of course, we haven't done a whole lot of testing, so, you know, it does need more. But f I remember when I did the Fedora 25 beta, it was nowhere near as stable as this one is. And I'm really looking forward to putting it on actual hardware. I'd like to see one of the big problems with the Yoga series is having to blacklist the um, IdeaPad underscore laptop so that you can get Wi-Fi working. I'm wondering if those kind of issues are now hopefully going away uh, because these are problems that have been around for a long time and you'd think once the software is updated enough it would be less of an issue with the hardware. It's been something you have to do all the way back since I've had my uh, Yoga 2 Pro so 
issues like that kind of make it a bummer. But again, we're on Linux. We're not talking about Mac OS or Windows um, where you don't have a whole lot of latitude. You do in Windows, I think, to fix things. Uh, in Linux, you really have a lot of latitude. You can try all kinds of different things. And you can mess things up, too, which I've done before. Well, thank you for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, please do like um, and subscribe. If I can get that subscriber count up, I'm going to take on some advertisers, which will definitely help out the bottom line. If you really enjoyed it, drop by Patreon and consider giving a dollar a month to help out the channel. I know you hear it all the time. I'm not obliging you to do anything like that. Uh, your likes, subscribes, and shares are always very appreciated, as well as your comments. I always enjoy hearing what you have to say, and you make it worthwhile. So thank you for watching, and thank you for the comments, and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.